Uh, g'day, guys. Welcome back to Stat Chat Sports. Uh, Tazza is is with me today. Um, World Cup podcast. Um, it's been a while actually since we've done one of these, and and a lot a lot has happened. A lot has progressed. Um, obviously, round of sixteen is is done at time of recording this. So there's plenty to talk about. Plenty to talk about. So much to get through in the little time. So um, real quickly. Um, let's just go through the the last group stage games because um, there was plenty of drama um, in, in plenty of groups, um, plenty of chopping and changing of the teams to go through um, to say the very least. So, I mean, from the top, obviously Netherlands, they were a shoe in to go in and go through anyway. They ended up beating Qatar. Senegal uh, also went through in the group. They needed a win um, and, and Koulibaly chipped up there to, to score the winner. Um England, England were looking solid. They they comfortably beat um, they comfortably beat uh, Wales. Wales. Well, uh, the Aussies, they uh, they got they got the dub. Um, I, we well, I mean, it was it was pretty much a shoe in that France were going to beat Tunisia, and and in, in doing that, that meant uh, Australia only needed a draw. Um, but because Tunisia ended up beating France, France fielded a very very weak team. Um. You know, Tunisia week for France, winning. yeah. Week for France, <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly right. So um, that meant Australia had to get the win, um, and I didn't realize this until like a few days after the fact. So um, up the Aussies there for getting the job done, finishing second in a group where I just about think everyone um, had them finishing last. Um, they'd definitely written off by a lot of people. Um, I seen a uh, I seen a video and it's just every a copy and paste of every video of like a, a preview of the mm-hmm. World Cups and just. How they were, everyone was just placing Australia down uh, rock bottom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was pretty sweet to see. Let's see all that in one and then kind of like up yours. Like, exactly. Well, we're here. <laughs> That's right. They they deserve to, they definitely deserve to go through, I think. And um, at the end yeah. of the day, so, so credit to them. It's, um, it's good. It's, it's been a while since they made it um, out of the group stages. So, so credit to them there. Um, we saw in, uh, in group C, that was pretty. That was pretty topsy turvy there. I think Poland ended up going through on uh, goal difference because of the because of the late goal scored by Saudi Arabia against Mexico. Um, mm-hmm. I think Poland. I think at that stage it was it would have been because uh, they were. I'm pretty sure they were level on goal difference as well. So it would have gone to the um, the fair play rule, and I think Poland probably would have progressed anyway. They had a, they they had fewer um, yellow cards. But obviously, a late Saudi goal ruled that out, and um, Poland progressed behind Argentina anyway. Um, Belgium crashed out, smack bang at the uh, no, they weren't bottom, but they crashed out. Um, called called forward by Kevin De Bruyne. Um, he 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 said they weren't going to win it, but they didn't even make it out of the group stages, so that was pretty poor. But Morocco topping that group. Um, mm. That's that's a surprise package there. I don't think anyone picked Morocco to top that group. Oh no! Oh well, Samuel Eto had him as half of the uh, of as, of the final, so yeah, okay. he could be on the money. Well, we'll get into the into the next round later, but yeah, uh, one person may have may have picked a, a little surprise packet here, but definitely wasn't us. No, um, Group E probably had the most um, up and down group of of all on the on the final day. There, um, obviously, the group of this this was probably known as the group of death here. Um, Spain and Germany were projected to go through. Um, the, they're the two the two powerhouses there, as it was. There was a time <clears throat> in the fixtures mm. where both Spain and Germany were go, uh, were both going out, uh, both crashing out. But um, Germany too strong for Costa Rica in the end it meant they got the win, but it um, it didn't mean anything anyway. They still they still crashed out. But Japan again, surprise package is top in the group. Yeah, no, it's Asian football is uh the Asia Pacific football is is looking up definitely. I mean, we've seen uh Saudi Arabia look good, Japan, Iran didn't they I think they impressed uh, as a whole. Uh didn't make it out, but they still showed some good glimpses. Obvious obviously Australia as well. Uh Korea making mm. it out of their group as well. We'll get to that, but yeah, I mean, huge a huge huge talking point as well was the ball over the line was the ball not over the line. For Japan, for uh, was I think it was the second goal. I think it was the goal that put him ahead. Um, there was lots of talk about that. Um, lots of videos being made about perspective and you know the way that the camera angle made it look like it was miles out. But um, you know a lot of I think a lot of uh, a lot of Spanish and, uh, and and German fans alike there 
that um, would have preferred that ball to be out, but um, but not the case. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of that one. That was a. Uh... I mean, God, if 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 it was in, there was, there might have been oh, a couple of millimeters in. Yeah, from 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 what I'm thinking. So I don't know. Rules are rules, but you, you, at first glance, that definitely looked out. We had Portugal and uh, Korea go through in Group H. Although Uruguay won, um, South Korea caused the upset and um, and and went through. And the, the scenes at full time there with um, all the South Korean players uh, in their huddle waiting for the news um, to, to see that basically, you know, the full-time whistle had gone and that they were through. And uh, it was good, good to see there. Like you said, the Asian, the Asia Pacific uh, region of football is, was, was, is definitely shining in, in this world cup, but um, credit there, Portugal probably surprised to lose. I didn't see their lineup. They might've fielded a rather, a little bit more of a weaker, weaker side. Um, but I mean, they were through anyway, so it didn't really matter there. And then um, Brazil, last time we spoke, we were talking about um, them breaking records of unbeaten in the um, in the group stages. <laughs> the jinx. The jinx. Put the moz on them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Cameroon got the job done there and a, uh, 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 an Abubakar winner and um, a red card to follow for, for taking the shirt off in the celebrations. Oh, I think you copped that one. I think he was pretty happy to, yeah, even, even, even his reaction, he's just like, ah, oh, whatever. Look, I've just got the winner against Brazil. Look, I'm going home. It doesn't really matter. So whatever. So that's a wrap up on the groups. Um, so they obviously saw the, the Netherlands, USA, Argentina, Australia, Japan, Croatia, Brazil, and Korea, England and Senegal, France, Poland, Morocco, Spain, and Portugal, Switzerland progress to the round of 16. Now this is this is what we're here for. Um, is the round of 16. This is where it starts getting. This is where it starts getting real interesting. Um, and and the first one they kicked it off was was Netherlands and and the US. Um expected winners the dutch here um but so i think what what was interesting for me is that obviously like you know the, the netherlands are probably regarded as as a top top nation in in the world cup but it's the first time i've seen a a top nation go up against well, the US, the us with the underdogs so we'll call them the underdogs um but change their game style to to suit uh, to suit them and to stop the the way that their um, the opponents were playing. Normally, if it's a if it's a squad player for player, paper for paper, squad for squad, you know they're better. They just say, oh, we'll just we'll just play our normal way, let the quality shine through. But obviously, they'd done their homework and 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 figured that the US were were pretty dangerous and pretty quickly on the counters. Um, so the second that the, the Dutch lost that ball, they were straight back into their into their banks of four. Um, and defended on and and ended up playing on the counter attack and and they scored their first like two goals that way um, mm. and they they executed the game plan perfectly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Netherlands were pretty well, uh, pretty convincing for mine. A mm. uh, couple of the US goals were, I mean, the first two were were, were quite good, but that last one was pretty disappointing mm. to find Dumfries at the back post and give up the last goal like that was the killer goal really for for uh, for the US. So. It, it, not, not a great showing from the US where they really would have hoped uh, for something a little bit more and to show some more promise looking to the future. And uh, Argentina, Australia. Now, it's it's worth spending a bit of time on here because there's, as, as Aussies, we can we can be incredibly proud of what they put up here. Um, after going 2-0 down against Argentina, you probably think, yeah, no, that's that's done and dusted, um, especially, especially, again, you know, being Australia, you know, the quality player for player is just is leagues but um i think i think it was a goal 70 i think it was around the 75th minute that um mm. the wicked deflection from from craig goodwin ended up finding the back of the net um but from that point onwards it was it was all australia and they were incredibly unlucky not to land a late equalizer and take it to extra time yeah they threw the kitchen sink at argentina there and i mean they were going for broke they knew i mean there's no they they, they had to throw everything at it and that grand qual, oh, that it was oh, oh, right just that end. little turn, and oh, I thought he was he was so close, and it took some some Emmy Martinez brilliance to uh, and the to, uh, to... the the Aziz Behic Messi esque oh. run that um, you know if if that had gone in, Messi himself would have applauded that one. Uh that that would have been goal of the tournament. I don't I don't want to look at Richarlison's <laughs> scissor kick, whatever. 
that that would have been goal of the tournament. Purely just the uh, the, the caliber of player, really. I mm. mean, he's, he's he's danced through half of that team. I think it was Martinez that yeah. um, Lissandro Martinez that that stuck the um, the the leg out and just managed to to scupper that. But oh, that that would have absolutely just sent the house down. Yeah, yeah, it would have. So, I mean, disappointing at the end of the day. We weren't expected to go through, but you know, they they the boys put up a a valiant fight. So they you know they they, they well and truly proved to themselves exactly. They didn't mm-hmm. roll over and get yeah. beaten. They you know they proved to themselves and the nation and and you know fans of the World Cup that the they world. they deserve to be there. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. France Poland would is next. Um, yeah. yeah, and I mean again, France expected to win here. Giroud breaks the uh, broke the record number fifty two. He's um he's outscored Thierry Henry for for the French national team now, which I mean we spoke about uh, in in one of our other videos, but not a player that you'd expect to be holding that um that uh, that title for for France at least. Yeah, I mean he's I don't know he just becomes a different different player uh, playing for his country. Mm. I mean he's always been a solid player for for club at club level Arsenal, um, Chelsea, Milan now. Uh, Montpellier when it, before he really broke into the big time. I think it was Montpellier. Um, yeah. yeah, but he's yeah he's just a different player and um, think of all the French names, all, all the big strikers that have played uh, for France, and you would not put him at the top mm. just just based on skill alone. Uh, you probably not have it in there, but it just shows what long, longevity and and just consistency can do. He, I mean. Half of those guys didn't wouldn't have played till or played at the top level till 35, 36, to mid thirties. So it just shows that sticking around and consistency is key. I can't remember if it was yourself or if it was BT on um, on on one of the other ones that um, that pointed out Mbappe was going to go um, ballistic in the group stages. I think it might have been. It might have been BT. I don't think it was me. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. pretty sure, pretty yeah. sure it was BT. He's he's another two here in the group stage. Two absolute thunders of of uh, of goals. I think he's currently leading the the golden boot. I think he's got five, and there's like, yeah. there's like four or five players all on three. Um, but he's looking he's looking pretty solid there to take that out. But um, it, it's just you know it, it's Mbappe. Do you, do you need to say much more? Yeah, I know. Oh, the those two goals are just. He hammered them. I mean, nobody should be able to swing that. He was standing still. Yeah. Yeah. And the way he just put, he swung his leg through it. Ah, it just thundered it. I mean, he hit it near post as well. The the keeper should have, well, not should have had it covered, but what do you do at that point? I'm not sure what you, you know, how you meant to cover that. But he's just thundered it. It was kind of over him, but sort of near post as well. But yeah, even the second one, he's just absolutely thunderbolted that and, uh, I mean, France, yeah, the next round, um, once we go through the rest of the fixtures and, and look at their next fixture, it's a tough game, but it's hard to see France at, in this kind of form not getting all the way to the to the, to the the last dance. Yeah, and there was, you know, they, they, there was talks that they were, it was going to be a tough tournament for them, lost a lot of experienced players. Obviously, Benzema out, both Pogba and Kante out. They were pivotal in, in their 2018 uh, World Cup run, so there was the squad was looking substantially weaker at this point than than in 2018. But I mean, there's there's that much quality in that side. I remember the in 2018 when when like France put out like sort of their their starting eleven, and then and then you know with the the players that were sort of you know in the squad on the bench, and you essentially had two top quality starting elevens there anyway. So you know the fact that they've obviously lost Benzema. And and you know Kante, Pogba, a couple of big players, they've they've managed to slot him in with um with with just as much quality anyway. So it yeah, it doesn't surprise me the fact that they are still sort of just rolling rolling through everyone at the moment. Um, but obviously it, it gets to the later stages and 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 in the next round it's 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 a tougher definitely a tougher opponent. So um yeah, it's it, that's that's definitely going to be one of the more exciting um, quarterfinal matches there. Um, which we'll, we will touch on just a little bit later. Um, was who was next here? Oh, England and Senegal. Mm. Uh, that was a whitewash. Let's be perfectly honest. It took a little bit for England to get going once they started. Um, the floodgates just opened, um, and yeah, Senegal had no answer. 
It's the Jude Bellingham show. Yeah. <laughs> he was instrumental. And in those f- first two goals didn't happen if it wasn't for him. So, I mean, especially the second. Uh, he just took that ball, ran through the midfield and, and uh, the, the the pre-assist. Obviously, didn't he didn't get his name on the on the assist for the second. But um, that ball through, I think it was... Was it, uh, was it Foden? I can't remember. I think Harry Kane scored the um, second. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, unreal. Um, England, oh, it, it sucks that they're coming up against France. Oh, that's going to be an absolute belter, mm-hmm. that one. I will be I will be staying up for that one. I don't care what time it is. I don't know what time it is, but I will be up for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. I mean, in, I... England, for me, haven't been this convincing for a while. I mean, obviously, the US game apart, they've, they've kind of they've they've pushed teams aside. So this this is a pretty this is an acid test for them. I mean, France are as good as it gets, uh, probably minus Brazil and Argentina. Hmm. So or Argentina on their day. So yeah, it's going to be a huge one for them. And I mean, they're, they're probably coming in with as good a form as, as you'd want. Yeah, I mean, their, their their pre-tournament form was terrible. I think they mm. hadn't scored a goal for like five or six games, and you know there was questions on on Gareth Southgate and and everything like that. But they've they've come into the tournament and hit hit the hit the form when they needed to. So yeah, this this is um this is the best time ever really to to come across someone like France. But you know, to to win it, you got to be the best, and and France are, are the holders. They're currently the best. So you know. If they if they want to win it, then they've got to get through them. So yeah, it's that's that's game game of the round there in the quarterfinals. That's that's going to be an absolute belter. Now we go to Japan, Croatia. Um, ended on penalties. I think um, this was probably one of the worst penalty shootouts that I think I might have seen. There's a couple of awful penalties from Japan here. Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty terrible, sort of all over the shop. Um, I mean, penalty we, we've seen. We'll get to the other one, but I, I'm going to link these two together with the other penalty shootout. I mean, what what's happened? Did everyone just forget how to take a penalty? Everyone's really really shit the bed. Come come the uh, come crunch time. Um, uh, yeah, we, we will touch on the next one on the next penalty shootout soon. But this yeah, I mean, oh, they were so close, Japan. Yeah, uh, and they had chance. Well, when I say chances, they I'm pretty sure they hit the crossbar too at one one. Um, they almost had themselves uh in the late again but oh yeah so close but so far for japan yeah had the lead too took the lead yep. and um mm. let it slip not long after but yeah beautiful header from uh was it was it perisic yeah i think yeah yeah with the header yeah, that was about a as good as a peach of a header yeah yeah um speaking as, as much as we were talking up all of the uh asian and um south pacific uh, teams mm. we've well, they're all gone now <laughs> as, as, good as, <laughs> yeah. as good as it was that they made it to the round of 16 they're now all gone um yeah. brazil swept aside um, south korea like it was nothing um i think there was some there was some words being thrown around accusing the brazil players of taking the piss a little bit you know i think even i think even the manager joined in in the um in the celebrations in the dancing of one of the goals um and uh, i think it was the uh, i think it was richarlison's goal um, there's a little bit of a little bit of juggling on the head at the, on on the edge of the box before he made his way into the box to finish it. So, you know, I can see where they're coming from, but you know, that's the Brazilian way, isn't it? Really, it's it's all about that samba and that style. So, yeah, yeah that's that's the way they play. That they they're defined by their their skill. Their there there's no other really in the world. I mean, any other any other country can the tactics and and, and the talent, but Brazil have that skill and that flair. So I mean that's that's what you get with Brazil. You you've got to expect that. And I mean, if you don't show up, they're gonna absolutely tell you. And mm. it's the World Cup. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no taking it easy. Neither neither should there be. I mean, mm. there's four one. It's not exactly a mercy rule. I mean, it was four nil at one point, and I mean that South Korea goal was a bloody good goal. Yeah, that was a good. But one. but I mean, they left let the foot off. I mean, they, I'm sure they probably could have mm. put a few more back, but. Yeah, there's there's no there's no taking it easy in the World Cup. It, it's the finals and and teams are out. They're, they're going to be out for blood. I mean, it, it, this is where it gets serious. Yeah, and and this is why for me Brazil 
I, 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 I still the top pick, I think, to take it out. I mean, they've, mm-hmm. they've looked the best team throughout the whole the whole tournament. Obviously, you know, take away the the lot their last loss in the in the group stage, but you know, at ruthless is is where that comes to yeah. mind against against Korea. Um, Neymar was back, which is obviously a, a huge a huge addition. Um, that was sort of the, the talks that he was going to be back for the the round of sixteen. Um, but um, I I am sort of surprised that they, he played. I thought drawing Korea and no disrespect to South Korea, but they, you know, that it, it is a little bit of of a weaker team that um, they could have played. Um, you know, if it was the other way around, they would have been playing. Um, oh no, South Korea did Korea finish? Korea finished second in their group, didn't they? Yeah. So that they they couldn't have finished top. Otherwise, I was going to say they yeah. would have been playing Portugal, but um, you know, so I figured. At that point, maybe if Neymar wasn't one hundred percent, maybe he gets rested for another game. But if he played, he obviously he's obviously at one hundred percent. So um, that's a big that's a big plus for them. Um, let's talk about that other penalty shootout. Um, that speaking of bad penalty shootouts, it do, probably doesn't get much worse than this for Spain. That's back to back World Cups now out on the round of sixteen on penalties. And what made it worse is that Luis Enrique said pre-game that they practiced over a thousand penalties. <laughs> Um, yeah. in practice for this and they didn't score a single penalty. Yeah, when I saw that, oh, I just couldn't believe it. Like, way to, I don't know, way to, it, it's a jinx, I don't know. Mm. It's it's just, uh, it's a bad omen it, and oh, that stunk. But it just, how was uh, Hakimi's, oh. Hakimi's Penenka to, yeah. to seal it for Morocco? I mean, the, the balls, it's it's like, it's not like Morocco get get to the last eight every year it, it, no. this is this is groundbreaking for morocco and and the balls to just panenka uh the winning penalty and then bust out the the penguin the little jalen model um <laughs> the, the shout out to jalen model from the miami dolphins he's um yeah it, it was pretty good i think there's there's a there's another reason behind that as well obviously i think um from what i've read hakimi born in spain obviously with with Morocco heritage, but born in Spain, grew up playing for through the Real Madrid Academy. And obviously he was a Real Madrid player at one point. So he probably had the choice to play for Spain, but he chose Morocco. So he's knocked out his, I suppose you can say his home, his home country. Um, but I, 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 I believe he does that little penguin celebration um, with Sergio Ramos, which oh. obviously Ramos not there. He's just knocked out, you know, his mate his mate's country. Um, so I'm not sure if it was a little dig towards him or towards Spain or, or, or whatever, or if it was just, just something he felt like doing, but yeah, I think that, yeah, there's a little bit, a little bit more of a reason behind that um, little celebration. Yeah. I mean, you love to say that. And I mean, good on Hakimi for, I mean, it, it's so easy to, he, he's a world-class player and he could just go and say, Oh, well, I mean, Spain, do you want to win the big trophies? Um, Go play for Spain. You, you're mm. probably more of a shot to go to win those to the big accolades, and and to choose his um his his true homeland in, in Morocco is is a big call, and I mean it's it's been vindicated. Now uh, the last round of sixteen game, it's, it's it was obviously just a demolition. Um, it's Portugal just made Switzerland look silly, all without Ronaldo. Ronaldo on the bench, um, first hat trick scored of this world cup. Um, and it, it's, it, it was the guy that replaced Ronaldo in the starting 11. I mean, this just speaks volumes. Yeah. Oh, huge. Go Carlo Ramos, uh, the Ben Faker striker. Uh, he is, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't see Chris, uh, Ronaldo can't be starting the next game. And I think he knows that now. I mean, there's no way you're dropping a guy after scoring a hat trick. So, and uh, no way back for Ronaldo at this point. And, yeah, uh, I don't know if he's probably making a mountain out of a molehill and so does the world about every little thing that Ronaldo does. But when his Portuguese teammates were celebrating, he was walking down the tunnel. So, yeah. it, uh, I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably just love to, to bag the guy, but it's just not a good look. I don't know. When all eyes are on you, or just spend a few more minutes out there with, with your teammates. Just embrace it. I mean, he knows the eyes are on him, so I just don't get why why he wouldn't just you know take the time. It's it is just uh, egotistical, I think, and just be there for the team. I mean, 
these these opportunities don't come around so so often. I mean, for Ronaldo, they have. I mean, he's he's played in what five World Cups now. Yeah. So it's different. Mm. Five or six. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, just just be a team player. Yeah. What makes this like funny is that obviously I, I believe there was some animosity within the camp anyway after he was brought off on uh, in one game. He obviously wasn't too happy. It might have even been the South Korea loss when when he came off. Um, he he wasn't too happy. He spat the dummy there. Probably had had a go at the the coach as well. So that's that's when he's turned around and said, "All right, well, I'll just leave you on the bench." You know. So it's it's the same sort of arguments that um, and same sort of thing that we were seeing at at United prior to the World Cup. So there's you know all all fingers point to to one person being you know the the reason behind all of this, and it's and it's it's Cristiano Ronaldo. So. You know, it's it's down to him, and like you said, it's you know you celebrate with your teammates. It's you know it's your country. It's what he's played for for the the whole time. You know, you're playing for you're playing for something different other than just you know the the the, the badge on the shirt sort of thing. You're playing for a whole nation, so you would think that doing that he'd be able to put all this childish shit aside. But you know, <laughs> from what we've seen in the last month, that's 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 not <laughs> going to happen. But one one thing I did see is is obviously the the debate was. Is sort of between like obviously Ronaldo, Messi is their last World Cup. You know, if if either one was to to win the World Cup and take it home, would that sort of solidify that player as the goat over the other? And and somebody uh, after this game, obviously with Ronaldo being on the bench and missing out on a large portion of it, someone said if Portugal end up winning the World Cup with Ronaldo on the bench, can he still be, you know, can he still be given that act that that accolade of the goat? And and it, it's a good point because if Portugal win it without him, what he, he hasn't done anything to get there, and you could you know his performances in the group stages have been shit. So it probably yeah, it, it does more to take away from it. Yeah. Really, I mean it, it does more to lessen his case. So um, I mean Messi's sort of getting it done for Argentina, getting them getting them across the line. Um, we'll we'll see what happens in, in in the next stage for them. But yeah, I mean. For Ronaldo, it, it, it's doing nothing but negatively impacting his case at the moment. Oh. A nod to uh, a nod to Benfica, another talent off the Benfica uh, mm. talent line with Ramos there. I mean, they've just sold Nunes for whatever stupid money it was. They've got Enzo Fernandez, absolutely balling. Mm. Now they've got Goncalo Ramos. I mean, absolute talent line. But, and this World Cup is working wonders for them. There's something there's something in the water in Benfica over there because they they breed them just about every season. You'd think they take the you know clubs take their best players and you think okay you know a little bit of a rebuild, but then up, up pops somebody else just to replace that player and it's just it's 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 almost like you know that player never left. If it, in in some cases even better, um, mm. yeah, no, something something's happening over there in Benfica. They need to get those players tested. I think yeah, unreal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just quickly touch on the quarterfinals um, before we wrap up. So obviously, um, Netherlands and Argentina, um, this isn't the order. I believe, actually, I believe the first game is Croatia, Brazil. So let's start there. Um, this, this has, um, just about Brazil written all over it for me with Croatia being as average as they were against Japan and Brazil being as good as they were, um, against South Korea. Um, I can't see anything else less than a Brazil win here. Yeah. Brazil win. Um, yeah, I, I've I've chatted to a, a couple of Croatian fans, and I mean this this is where they expected to get. I think, oh, this is where they're happy with. So every everything from here is is a bonus, and they knew that they would have to come up against Brazil at some point. And yeah, Brazil's Brazil, so you you, you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be unhappy if if taking a loss here. You just don't want to get absolutely beaten. Netherlands and Argentina. This this next to um, France and England is probably the other mouth watering quarterfinal for me. Um, obviously, Netherlands I think could probably be seen as a bit of a dark horse at the moment. I think, um, but they're coming across Argentina, at um, who 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 obviously besides the slip up the start, they they're hitting strides here. And um, Lionel Messi is is basically carrying the squad on his shoulders. He's putting in some serious performances, so it's a dangerous time to come across those. Yeah, this is uh this is an interesting one. I'm I'm very keen to see Messi against uh, Battle Virgil Van Dijk. Mm. I think that's that's a that's a pretty big tussle. Hopefully those two can see a bit of one on one time. But yeah, um, I, I like the Netherlands, but it is Argentina. Um, 
I can see this one going right down to the wire though. Um, and I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to pick the Netherlands. Okay. Um, I, I think they, they've found their stride. I think now, I think they're warming into it. Mm. Uh, I think they're pretty average to start off, but they're, they're definitely warming into it now. And so are Argentina, but I just, for me, the Netherlands, just, I, I think they'll get it done. Well, if it goes to penalties, the last um, penalties between these two in 2014 went the way of, Sp- um, of Argentina, excuse me, in, I think that might've even been the semis um, to send yeah. it through. Yeah. So it was the last World Cup final, or, um, yeah, grand, uh, final appearance for, for Argentina and Messi. So yeah, it's, um, you know, they the Netherlands don't have the uh, superstar Tim Krul um, in goal to stay to save the penalties. So, yeah, no, I I see what you're saying, and 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 I I do like Netherlands. They've got some good players in there, but I think Argentina just just going to be too strong. Morocco and Portugal. Now, this this obviously is is just going to be an interesting one based off of what we've seen. It, it's impossible to write Morocco off here. Um, Portugal look obviously incredible against um, Switzerland, but um, Morocco have proved to be um, a thorn in in a many sides this so far the tournament. Yeah, there's there's a lot of unheralded players which that are really dragging uh, Morocco forward. Obviously, you've got the Hakimis and the Ziyeches of of the world or of Morocco, but there's there's um, Sofian Amrabat who is courting a lot of interest from from if you, if you read the the, the rumours, the transfer rumours, he's courting a lot of interest from big clubs and rightly so. I mean, he's just absolutely bossing the midfield there f- for them. So they're not to be counted out, absolutely. Um, like I said, Portugal are on a roll, just steamrolled, um, hitting Switzerland for six. But, yeah, who knows? We've, we've seen stranger things happen this mm. World Cup. Now, I mean, we've, we've pretty much spoken a fair bit here about England and France. So we, this is – I can't – I honestly can't. I can't pick a winner here. It's just going to be too close. Um, and it's going to be – and it's going to be a, such a good game to watch. So it's um, – well, I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning. Perth time for us, but um, I think it's going to be worth one getting up for, for sure. But um, I, I, I did want to just ask you a quick question here. Obviously, mm-hmm. you've spoken about a couple, you've brought up a couple of players um, and it's actually it leads into what I wanted to ask anyway. Obviously, World Cups make and break players, um, but I'll we'll focus on, I want to focus on making players. Out of, you, out of who you've seen so far, who 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 gets themselves a big money move, be it in January or or next summer? Oh, it, it's easy for me. I mean, it's the one everyone's talking about, I think. I mean, uh, oh, I mean it's Jude Bellingham, mm. I think. I mean, uh, it's already po- talked about that he's moving, so maybe mm. that's just cheating and that, that probably count that one out. I mean, he's moving regardless. He's not staying at Dortmund. Mm. He's just putting himself... This This is just to boost his value for Dortmund, yeah, really. Sure. And, if, well, I mean, he's probably chucked another 50 mil on his price mm. Mm. from from the pre-World Cup. Um, price, but ah, jeez. I mean, you mentioned uh, Enzo Fernandez. I think he's a big one. Yeah, I think, I think he's, he's probably the next one. What he's done, um, so far has been, you know, he he's he's got to be catching some some eyes. Cody Gakpo, he's he's one mm. that was already sort of in talks prior to the tournament, but he's he started the tournament off, um, sort of brilliantly. Um, and and one other player that I sort of thought of just going back to home saw here, I think Harry Sutar deserves a good move. I mean, I'm not talking big, big club, but um, I think he's I think he's playing for Stoke currently. Yeah. But um, you know, he 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 had a great tournament. He was an absolute rock at the back for for Australia. So um, you know, maybe a a a move to you know a sort of a lower prem team or you know something like that. But I think he deserves a a step up for him. Yeah, I think he's shown enough. Definitely, it, it wasn't a flash in the pan. We've seen a couple of games. Um, there's there's enough evidence there to suggest that he could mix it with with uh, a, a higher caliber player mm-hmm. than the than the championship. So, yeah, I mean that that's a good pick. It's a it's a uh, a roughy kind of pick, but mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, he's we don't we don't. I, I'm not sure if we've got any Aussie representation in the Premier League at the moment. No, well, Grand Cole now, but well, oh, when, he, well, when he when he eventually goes over there, but yeah, when he goes, but as as of right now, I, I don't think we've got actually anyone playing day in day out no. in, in the Premier League. So that would be huge, um, definitely for Australian football. Uh, which I mean, we we really hope sees a bit of a an upturn in in fortunes and just just the building of talent. 
All right, Tessa, that'll wrap us up. Um, Quarterfinals start uh, tomorrow night, um, Friday night for us, 11 o'clock um, Perth time. So um, kick us out, kick things off with Brazil. This is this is the pointy end of the tournament. This is where um, you know things start getting exciting. So um, we'll we'll be back um, maybe in a, in a week's time or so to cover uh, what's happened um, just before the final. We'll think of some things to do there, but um, thanks for joining us, Tazza. Thanks for listening. If you are new, uh, subscribe. If you like the, ch- if you like the content, leave a like um, and yeah, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.